Hello, I'm Kim. It's September 12th, and I'm just now doing my To Be Read. The old TBR. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I've already read two of these, and I've started a third, and I've got a rug rat who wants attention and hasn't wanted attention till this very moment. Here he is. He's just been to the Groomu. His name is Indiana Jones. You call him Dr. Jones. So we always say he's been to the Groomer of Doom. If you get that, then we should be friends. I'm gonna go ahead and start with library books, which is gonna include looking at the list of what's probably gonna turn up any day. First, we have Trailed, sorry about the glare, by Katherine Miles. This one is about two in particular Shenandoah Park murders, so the AT, the Appalachian Trail, and the ladies were Lolly Winans and Julie Williams. This is about their murders, but also murders in Virginia in this particular area that are still unsolved to this day. I have read this. I will talk about it in my wrap up. I love anything about hiking and I love true crime. So this was right up my alley. Next is Foe by Ian Reed. Now Ian Reed, Ian Reed wrote, what was this? I'm thinking of ending things. It was kind of like a, a horror. So I've heard that this is a, a horror novel. It just says fiction here. So I don't know what to make of it, but it's about Junior and Henrietta. They live on a farm kind of in the middle of nowhere. I'm not sure what year we're in. There are some big brother elements to it, even with them being far away from everyone else. And someone comes out to the farm and proposes that Junior, the husband, go away for some reason. And it's about kind of the fallout of that. So he's leaving the farm to go very far away. And it says, Arrangements have already been made so that when he leaves, Henrietta, the wife, won't have a chance to miss him because she won't be left alone, not even for a moment. Henrietta will have company, familiar company. That's what it says. That is what we know. Is the company going to be a foe? Or is Henrietta a foe? I'm reading that now. Uh, next, Andy. Finley Donovan is killing it. Foe is due sooner, but I really, truly just want to read this because I just finished this and it took me to some dark places as true crime will. And this is apparently a comedy that men, women alike, different ages find hilarious. And I love hilarity. I love comedy. We shall see. So what I've heard is that this lady is an author and she's talking to her agent somewhere in public, a cafe or something. And she's talking about the premise and the plans for her next novel. And a woman overhears this conversation and thinks that Finley Donovan is a murder for hire lady. And she wants to pay her a generous sum to take someone out. All I know or care about this is that it has people laughing out loud, like literally laughing out loud, having lots of fun, and it's just apparently crazy. And she just, she's not a murder for hire, of course. She's an author, but she does need money. She's down on her luck. So I don't know if she actually tries to go through with it or, or what, but I am excited about this one for sure. I'm just, I keep catching the glare. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do about it. I guess I'll put the book down, shall I? Next is The Ruins. I truly from the depths of my soul do not remember asking for this book from the library, but I did because it came. Just let me read this, the inside flap. Let's just discover together what this is about. The Ruins follows two American couples just out of college enjoying a pleasant lazy beach holiday together in Mexico as on an impulse, they go off with newfound friends in search of one of their group. The young German who in pursuit of a girl has headed for the remote Mayan ruins, site of a fabled archeological dig. This is what happens from the moment when the searches moving into the wild interior begin to suspect that there is an insidious, horrific other among them. Okay, I'm glad I requested this. So they're going to be in the jungles of Mexico around Mayan ruins, and there's something terrifying out and about with them. So this is a horror. No, it says it's a fiction. I 
don't know what this is, but Stephen King gives a little blurb about it. That doesn't really matter to me, but it makes me think that perhaps this is a horror, a thriller. Okay, so a library books to read this month, four, four of them. Now, that's probably not correct. I'm gonna sign in here and we're gonna see how close I am to getting some of these other books. Because what inevitably will happen is Kindle books will become, or eBooks from the library will become available. Actual books that I've requested will come available. And I could have requested these months ago. All right, so we've got The Passengers by John Mars. We've got The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, Look Closer by David Ellis, Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. And as usual, The Only One Left by Riley Sager. Oh, also Fuzz, When Nature Breaks the Law. So those could come up. I really don't think it's a good idea to talk about them. I don't know if they're gonna come in. Um, something I've already read, and I'll talk about during my wrap up. This is from my own shelves. And I finished a book and I just came down to my shelves and randomly looked for everything. And since I'm a mood reader, I saw it and wanted it. Reading Lolita in Tehran. So this is a, a memoir from an English professor from the Islamic Republic of Iran. Her name is Azar Nafisi and she goes through some of her experiences going from more of a liberal Tehran to a very controlled Iran where before the women could wear she calls them robes and their scarves if they wanted to as a profession of faith. And then slowly they're not allowed to be out and about without a chaperone. And then they're having to wear these in public whether they want to or not. So she talks about losing the, the feeling of the sun on her skin, her hair being out and about and just feeling the breeze and interacting with nature the way she wants to. Uh, not being able to sit wherever she wants, not being able to say what she wants uh, as a professor of English Lit. So, again, I've read this. I'll talk about it later, but it was on my September TBR. The next book from my shelves is The Dead Romantics. I did not buy this. I'm guessing someone gave this to me. A friend gave this to me, and I, I don't remember who. But The Dead Romantics is by Ashley Poston. Poston? I've heard wonderful things about this. If I'm remembering, see, I what I have in my head is her newest book, which I can't remember what it's called. The Seven Year Slip, I think. <laughs> okay, this one is about a ghostwriter, but after a terrible breakup, she no longer believes in love. She has this editor. He is gorgeous. He's very handsome, but they do not get along. He is very much the antagonist of this story. He won't give her an extension on her book deadline. So she's just prepared, Florence, the, the protagonist, she's just prepared to kiss her career goodbye. But then she gets a phone call uh, that she must return home for the first time in a decade to help her family bury her beloved father. Oh gosh. Mm. I lost my father in 2018 very suddenly. I, if it talks too much about that, I might have to put it down. It'll be five years this October, and I don't know if I can read about it, but if it's really about romance and it's really funny or something, then I'm guessing I can. I mean, I got through Beach Read, and I mean, I cried, but I got through that one, and that was, you know, when it first came out years ago. So, Maybe I can do it, um, but she says, I guess she's going back down south. Oh, their family has a, <laughs> a funeral parlor. Ooh, so she goes down to help her family, and I guess they're staying at the house, and she's there at the funeral parlor, and she sees her mountain of a man, too handsome editor, and is he dead? He doesn't know why he's there, and she doesn't know why he's there. Ah, come on, that sounds... So hilarious. So even if there's a parent that has passed in this, which is really hard, maybe there's enough of the rest of the plot points and that's just a little bit of it. 
So I, I still am interested in this. I've had this for months. This looks so September to me because there's like death, there's a crow on the front. It's September, but it's still hot, so we've got some neon colors. I mean, this just looks like the perfect September book to me. Right? Don't you think? And then if I have time, which I don't ever have time, so I don't know what I'm even thinking right now. I have the Missing 411 book that I was talking about um, last month. It's by David Politis. I talked about him in my August TBR, but this is Missing 411, A Sobering Coincidence. So this deals with missing persons with these key elements. Water. Many of the cases involve victims being found in or near creeks, rivers, swamps, and lakes, and that's the center point of this book, Water. He never wants attention. He's not the dog that wants attention, and lately he wants attention all the time. Are you okay? Come lay beside me here in the chair. Just sit down. Just sit down. Just for a second. I'm almost done. See? I could uh, I could just sit and read this all day long, but it, it has pictures. It has maps. Here's a missing person. And this goes state by state. Obviously, I was most interested in Washington. There's a lot of water in Washington. There were a lot of uh, missing cases in Washington. All right, let's move into Kindle books. So on Kindle right now, I am reading Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This one is about a couple who are going to the Scottish Highlands for a retreat, just like a, a weekend, because their marriage isn't working very well. It sounds to me like one of them is going to try to kill the other, but there are secrets on both sides. You can't trust either one of them. It's dual POV. So this is their 10 year anniversary trip. She sets it up, she wins something from work. He does not wanna go. And they both have a ton of secrets. Adam and Amelia. He's like a screenwriter and she works for Battersea Dogs Home. I've just had like Robin coming in because I'm reading this now. Robin is a new character that we, we were just introduced to. She's the chapel's caretaker. I don't know what she's doing around. She just popped up out of nowhere. We had Adam, Amelia only until all of a sudden this random Robin girl hangs out, comes about. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what's going on, but it's really keeping me entertained so far. Okay, I've got two audiobooks. So the first one is Medieval Woman by Anne, is that Bear, Boar? I don't know. So it's Village Life in the Middle Ages. This was on sale, an audible sale recently that could still be going on. So Medieval Woman follows Marion and her husband Peter. It's mainly Marion's point of view as she goes from January to the end of the year in a medieval town where you're working sun up to sundown and it's just a woman's perspective on her anxieties bleeding and cramping and working and birthing and trying not to get pregnant worrying about getting pregnant wanting to get pregnant uh, watching people lose their kids watching your own kids die so far Marion has already had children born that barely took a breath and are dead. She's had like a two or three year old die of illness and she's had a baby who was smothered by a cat. So just every day heartache and toil and you can see her anxieties about death and life and how any little thing can go wrong and this domino effect could end in starvation. So it's so crazy as a human being, this is how our ancestors live. And as someone of predominantly English heritage, this would have exactly been what my family did, but they were toiling. It's crazy to get this look. I'm guessing from a historian, you'd almost have to be to know the ins and outs of life at this remote village. So that's one of them. Um, the second one that I would like to read and access via audiobook is Persuasion by Jane Austen. 
This was also part of the sale. And Florence Pugh, I think is how you say her last name, but she had such a wonderful, rich voice that I just had to buy it. I feel like Persuasion is not the most popular Jane Austen. And I know it's got sort of an insidious vibe or it can, but I feel like it's quite accessible via audiobook. And I don't even know why. Maybe it's just the lack of all the different characters. I feel like Pride and Prejudice has so many different characters and so much going on that I would not want to access that book via audiobook, me personally. All right, let's 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 see. Two audiobooks, one Kindle book, seven physical books. So 10 books total for the month of September. Anyway, I hope you're well. I hope you're excited about whatever you're doing. I hope you're reading. If you're not reading, uh, I hope you're relaxing in some way and not worrying your life away. Have a good day, night morning, you know, whatever it is, wherever you're at, and happy reading. God bless.